group. Thank you very much, John Corley. Tishik, I want to raise with you today uh, to ask you to open up construction for all those workers uh, that haven't been working for the last uh, four or five months. Uh, but first of all, I want to respectfully ask you to uh, increase the numbers that can go into a church for a funeral mass. Uh, and you see, I'm asking you to take into consideration places like the cathedral and big churches, the size and the height and the capacity that they have uh, to, to, to increase those numbers. And uh, Father Gerard Walsh was on our, um, on our uh, radio last week, and he said um, that uh, we have a professor for everything, but we don't have a professor or a position uh, created for a man with, or a person with common sense. And um, I, I sympathize and empathize with the McCaptie family today in Guinea Villa. Yesterday they lost their, uh, Jack McCaptie lost his wonderful uh, wife, uh, Mary Teresa. And, and there's about a hundred in that family. I don't know how they're going to manage, but I don't envy uh, the, the, the person that will decide who the team are to go in there. Tishik, however, I want to go on to uh, construction because um, for, for uh, too long now, uh, there's some construction workers can't go to work. If you're involved in social housing or, or, or in that line, you can. So team can go to work. It's very galling for some people. And then Tom or Moy can go to work because he, he, he's not working in, in social housing. And you see, not everyone gets on the social housing list. And people, people do need uh, houses if they're not. In, and uh, the people don't want to build their own houses. And they should be allowed to finish them and, and, and to do that. And the CEO part, you have to recognize that English recruit, recruit, recruitment companies are looking for all workers, skilled uh, carpenters, plumbers, drivers, skilled drivers, three, uh, flanners, flanneries are advertising weekly for 360 degrees drivers, uh, for dumpers and for different vehicles to, to work on the HS2 high speed. Uh, rail, the biggest uh, job since the English Channel. And, and if you don't believe me, <laughs> Tishuk, you can get to tarnish to Leo while you still have him to look at Twitter. He's good on Facebook and he can check out all those, what, what's happening in that line. And, 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 and surely you should work together and see that. And they're Thank looking you, for women as well in case, uh, in case that uh, Minister Madigan uh, w is, is listening into us. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy. Fa uh, no, no, well, time is up, Deputy. Thank you. We have to go to the Taoiseach. Taoiseach, uh, uh, under leaders' questions, we're supposed to deal with only one topic, not two. Yeah, well, I have time here in front of me, so you're all right. Don't <coughs> worry. Uh, Taoiseach. Well, first of all, I want to thank the Deputy um, for, for, for raising the issue. And in the first instance, I would say to the Deputy that in, that in his overall presentation, he essentially was dealing with the very negative impact that COVID has had on all our lives, be it in terms of um, observing, you know, um, attending mass or attending religious service, uh, in terms of construction and in, in other areas of life. The virus has upended our lives. Not government, not the Dáil, not the Oireachtas, the virus. And the problem now is uh, we have a virulent form of that virus. Uh, the B117, which is the dominant variant in the country. And we need to be very, very careful how we deal with that variant uh, in terms of, in terms of um, um, uh, dealing with, with, with restrictions and so forth. And that is why the next number of days we will spend a lot of time talking and getting the epidemiological data. Um, and I'm very conscious that in the last number of days, deputies, uh, the numbers have gone up far yesterday. Um, and everybody in this house needs to take that on board um, and, and interrogate that. That is serious. Uh, we are rolling out the vaccination program. Uh, we will have far more vaccines in the second quarter. Uh, we're over 700,000 doses have been administered now. Um, and I think that's an important point. Uh, as we move through April, uh, in particular, we'll have far more vaccinated. Um, so in terms of funerals, I do I, I understand and accept fully sincerity of the deputy's presentation. I, I think it's terrible myself. 
It's the one aspect of COVID. Titus, it's the one aspect of COVID that I think um, I think it hits people the hardest. That you can't attend the funeral of a loved one. Um, that it's, the numbers are very very low. Uh, we're, we will look at that. We've been asked by the churches to look at it. I'm not giving any commitments or guarantees in relation to it because we want to protect people. And unfortunately, some events at some funerals, minority, have led to a spread of the, of the, of the virus. Not in the church, it has to be said, but in events subsequent. Um, and there have been very significant outbreaks relating to funerals, unfortunately. Um, hence the extreme caution and regulations that have been put in place in relation to funerals. In terms of construction, the evidence was that general mobility uh, would give rise to the spread of this variant. And I still just, I remember deputy back in January when again we had 2,000 people in hospital. And I remember, I remember saying here, because everybody at the time was into suppressing the virus and into zero COVID and let's never kind of open again was the prevailing mood in the chamber, given the uh, extraordinary pressure that was on our hospitals and frontline healthcare workers. And I did say at the time, you know, uh, I knew it wouldn't be too long before, and I mean this, you know, that deputies would come back saying, let's open this and open that. And I understand it. But we are dealing with a very transmissible variant at the moment. Thank uh, you, Tisha. And that's something we up. need to take on board. It's not government or anybody who's trying to stop people to go back building. Government wants a housing program. Time it's the number up, one priority of us you. socially in terms of building more homes. But this variant and this virus is upending the best laid plans and most of all okay, the quality of Okay, thank you very much, Taoiseach. Lives. Time really is up. We have to go back to Deputy Ely Ray. Taoiseach, I, I respect the problem that you have and that the government has. Uh, and and the, the problem is though that we're not getting the figures down. And if that's going to continue, uh, it'll have to be uh, sensible and allow sectors of the community to open up and, 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 to, and to work where, where and, and, and trust people. Because to, to work in farm buildings, people can keep away from each other. To work in this rural uh, house, a one-off house, or to work in a small building estate, they can keep away from each other. And you see, um, there's other groups like small traders and shops, they're under severe pressure from multinational companies um, they, that are trading online, and, and they're, they're not ever going to be able to open up if this thing goes too far, and I'm afraid that it is. And, uh, uh, and just take the hairdressers, they were very, uh, they, they, when they were allowed to open, they were very careful, just allow one in at a time. And, Thank you, Deputy. And, and um, things like that. Uh, we, we, you have to be sensible and trust people to work because Thank you I don't much, know Deputy. who or what up. is going to pay for this if it's going to continue. All right. And if, are you, we Deputy going to Deputy lose Ray, all our workers to England? Thank you very much. Taoiseach, to conclude on this matter. Deputy, there was one week in January when we had 42,000 cases. One seven day period. And we had 2,000 people in hospital. The last seven days, 3,800 people. And today we have about 300, I think the latest was 29, 329 in hospital. Please stop saying the figures aren't coming down. That's killing people saying that. That's telling people their efforts aren't working. The efforts and sacrifices that people have worked against a very virulent, dangerous, and transmissible virus. We have got the numbers down quite dramatically because of our efforts. And meanwhile, we're vaccinating more and more people and we have vaccinated the most vulnerable in our society, which is also working. The serial testing in the nursing homes, I think it's down to zero, is, is, is yielding a positivity rate of 0.18%. That's how much the vaccines are working where they have been administered. Likewise, in our frontline healthcare workers, the vaccines have worked. That's the parallel process we Thank have to you, work Thank you, Taoiseach. Time is up. And I, I just say it to you, and I understand fully where you're coming from, believe me. But economically, all over the world has been proven, actually, that the more you try and keep the pressure on the virus economically, medium and long term, you'll do better. Thank you, Taoiseach. Time is uh, up now, and, and the variant is a real problem. Time That's is all I'm up. saying to you, Deputy. It just takes off if it's given a chance. Thank you very much. Mess